So uh, we have about 20 minutes or so remaining. Let me use that time to do what we've been doing the whole semester, problem solving with the ChatGPT for all. This is the fun stuff for me, so let me do that. Um, so I'm going to have ChatGPT here. And again, this is uh, um, as much as I joke about um, test to student being my worst to student, this is actually one example where test to student isn't being my worst student. He's not cheating way through multiple choice questions. Um, he still hasn't done this, but let me just clear those so that I can actually go through this exercise. Um, here, test the student is actually doing the stuff that I hope you are doing. Um, because, um, you know, if you're struggling with the material and somehow watching the homework help videos didn't help you enough, I want you to get help from somewhere. And if you are using generative AI as a tutor and that interaction ha helps you learn the material, then I think that's great. Whatever you are doing that helps you learn physics, I have no objection to. And as much as I try to give you problem solving examples through the homework help videos, frankly, watching videos, um, I agree, it's not the same as, um, it's same as having someone to be able to uh, answer your question, being able to interact with someone or something. And uh, as much as I think my own video explanations are clear and accurate, um, <laughs> maybe it's not always clear. Uh, I do think it's accurate. And hopefully if you spot mistakes, you'll let me know so that I can fix it. Um, so uh, so I think with uh, now 18 minutes or so remaining, uh, we probably have enough time to do two questions, maybe two or three. So let me pick out a couple of questions and uh, work them with the help of uh, ChatGPT. Uh, let me give in my usual prompt. I think it's a kind of remembered it in memory, but helps to remind it, I think. So I'll say, hi, I'm back. I'm again uh, working through my physics for a uh, mechanics question, one more questions, questions, and I'm really trying to learn the material so that I can later do, later do well in uh, the oral exam. Um, so um, with uh, each question, now, please wait for me to explain what I've done so far and just to help me with the next step. Uh, don't give me all the steps right away because I don't think I'll learn well that way. Yeah. Well. So let me pick a couple substantial questions. So some of the questions will be easy question in the sense that question like this, it's just application of definition. You know, force times displacement. Um, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> so like even if you don't have those memorized, you read it through the textbook, you find the right formula to plug in numbers to you are done. That's the hallmark of an easy uh, physics question. And, you know, in the required one-on-one -on -one meeting, frankly, I won't be asking you those questions because it's so easy that anybody can answer it. So, like, this one is not so easy anymore. Uh, you have to do an integral. So maybe we should do it. Yeah, you know, let's do this question because here you actually have to set up the integral. Um, so let me do it this way. Um, So I can imagine someone who's struggling, maybe having found a formula for work done by spring force and try to apply it. And you might uh, do something like work done by spring force. And maybe these two um, constants confuse you and you say, oh, I don't know, maybe it's a one half K1 x squared plus one half k2 um, x squared which is wrong but let's say you try to do that and if you do it that way um yeah i, I guess let me write out all the numbers um 208 and for me to do this i'll have to basically ignore units 
because uh, with the units, unit of the K2 and the X, it doesn't work out. <laughs> but let me just ignore the unit and do this. Squared. And let me just uh, do this calculation in a calculator quickly. Um, so I'm going to do a little shortcut, uh, do the factoring of things so that I have 208 minus 0 0.223 times 16.7 squared, 28,973. Uh, uh, it's kilojoules, so 28.97. 28.97. Um, so, so let me ask this question to ChatGPT. Um, Uh, for this question, I used a uh, formula from the textbook, uh, but the homework system says my answer is wrong. Is there a different formula I should use? By the way, I'm role-playing a student who's struggling and doing things that I wouldn't be so happy with it. <laughs> like, you know, what formula should I use for this question? That's the kind of question that I wish uh, people would uh, mature out of asking. Because um, the question you should be asking is, what problem-solving strategy you should be using? And the kind of the questions where if you had the right formula to plug in the numbers into an answer, those are the easy questions. You should be able to do it. That's fine. But in asking the question, what formula should I use? You're basically presuming that this is an easy question and asking, you know, can you help me with this easy question? And you might be dealing with actually a difficult question. And I, when you ask what problem solving strategy should I use, then you are not assuming that the question is easy. You are acknowledging it may be a difficult question. It may take multiple steps. What are some of those steps? But anyways, uh, ChatGPT will be more patient than I would be, so <laughs> let's see what it would say. Um, the London Elastic Force, almost the correct, let's revisit the concept, okay. Uh, force is given as that, constant, you need to, yeah, you need to use integra integrate, yeah, so you have to do that. So when you integrate the force, you'll get... So, and I guess depending on where you are, um, uh, it's, uh, I think, yeah, this is the correct integral. Uh, and so, you know what, let's uh, do this and first to get the correct answer um, uh, and then, um, and then it ask it for its help in trying to understand how to do it myself later. So, one, so this part is actually right. I don't have to correct it. So what I have to correct will be this part. Oh, you know what? Not much of a correction because it's going to be one fourth. Yeah, so this is still an easy question in the sense that once you got the correct formula, correct uh, potential energy uh, associated with the nonlinear spring force, then, then yeah, it's easy. Um, now, I don't think I can do the factoring that I was doing before anymore. So... Um, so let me just type everything in. 0 0.5 times 208 times 16.7 squared plus 0 0.25 times, oh, um, I should have done minus 0 0.223 minus times 16.7 to the fourth power is equal to, yeah, 24 point, because it's going to be kilojoule, 24.67. Uh, So I'll say, um, thank you, I got the correct answer. I wonder what uh, ChatGPT will say. I wonder if it will offer to uh, walk me step by step through the integral. Uh, if it doesn't, I will ask it as a follow-up question. Uh, yeah, it's now offering, but I'll ask. Uh, so, 
on this question I understand that I had to do the integral to find the different formula for work done by this nonlinear elastic force um, but I'm not not quite sure how to do the integral myself and I'm afraid that if this question comes up at the oral exam that I won't be able to do it myself. Can you help me? Yeah. Okay. Interval properly. Okay. To set it up that way. Yeah, you can do it as two separate integrals. That's fine. They'll be the one at a time. The first term. Um, so this is, uh, you know, something you should have memorized as power rule. And hopefully seeing this reminds you from your calculus one. But, you know, if we, you don't understand what this is, then ask it. That's really the advantage of generative AI. That it can go to really detail the steps that your instructor might assume that you know and for, skip over. Um, yeah, you get that. It's so forgetting the integration constant, but it's fine. Um, it'll, it'll probably apply limits where um, integration constant doesn't matter. Second term, okay. Yeah, this is again another power rule. Final expression. Um, oh, I, it, it's just doing that. Um, so let me ask, I can ask, shouldn't there be integration constants? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it, and explain the power rule. Yeah. Uh, oh, and it did say. Okay, okay, so it actually did explain it. Remember these key points, yeah, integral smaller part, power rule, yeah. So here, if you are doing this, you do the constant of integration. Now, if you watched one of my early kinematics lecture, you will have seen me explain how where if you do the definite integral, then uh, so from x equals 0 to some finite value, that takes care of the integration constant, yeah, 0 to specific distance. Uh, no, I think um, uh, this is good. No to this. Oh, wait. No, to the first question. Would you like? No, I would not like. <laughs> I think this is good. Uh, I think uh, I understand. And I'll come back to this question later to make sure that I'll remember. Okay, we got maybe five minutes. Let's uh, pick one substantial question and work that through. Um, yeah. So, um, substantial question. So, I think, oh, you know what? This is actually a lot harder than um, the first impression gave me the impression of. So, I might come back to that, but let me see if there's another question that's better for me to do. Let's be, uh, that's an easy question. Um, easy question. Power, yeah, it's, I think it's kind of easy. Um, this is a calculus question, but once you ha figure out what you're doing, you know, you are uh, extremizing a function. Kind of easy calculus question. Um, this is kind of kinematics. I think I might come back to that question three. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the harder conservation law questions we will actually do next week once we have conservation of momentum. Uh, yeah, I think this is also neat. Released here, but uh, you know, this might be. Is there a. Uh, Horizontal surface friction less. Um, guess this is the harder question. Um, yeah, but let me do it this way. I got five minutes, so even though this is not quite as substantial, I think. Uh, um, let's see. Okay. 
but I can lead with my confusion that uh, I thought this would be an easy question, but this looks hard, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so let me do this one. And the one at the end, yeah, it is a harder question. There is homework help, and you can also, you know, do it with the chat GPT yourself. So <laughs> I don't, I don't have to do it. Um, so I thought this would be a fairly easy application of definition of work, but I'm. Having trouble answering it. Uh, can you break it down for me? Constant velocity meaning net force is zero. Yep, that's good. And also that means you have to use standard strategy. <laughs> Think that we are just apply the force ends up being or no 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 part that's uh, uh, tough is actually you have to forecast the amount of friction force first because um, then uh, the total work will be zero and then after having figured out the friction force then the applied force doesn't work that's it is actually opposite of that um, yeah but but it does come up down to you have to use standard strategy so yeah, partake, apply the force. So, yeah, how much force you apply? Yeah, apply the force, balance constant. Yeah, apply force balance. So, figuring out friction force amounts to um, figuring out the applied force. So, yeah, normal force is reduced by. So hopefully, as you are reading down to this part, you might be reminded to uh, to apply standard strategy, and you might go through that yourself as a kind of review for yourself. Uh, in terms of answer, yeah, this is the correct answer, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it, it helps you to. So you know, I would recommend for human beings answering this question. You know, draw figures. You got the mass. You are applying a force. 25 degrees above horizontal and there's as usual gravity and normal force you know draw these figures to kind of make sure you have a correct mental image of what the vertical um, component of the, the, the applied force is um, but the formula ChatGPT is using is correct force of friction is that right uh, apply the force balance horizontally we can solve for apply the force um, take it step by step and go from there. Oh, I see. Okay, I think uh, this helps. Um, so, uh, if uh, Fn is uh, mg minus F F times the sine theta, and Fn is equal to mu times Fn, oops, uh, FF, a uh, friction force is that. Then F N is equal, uh, sorry, F F is equal to mu times F N plugged in, M G minus F F um, times sine theta. Uh, this has two unknowns, F F and F F, uh, but I also have the F F minus f f is equal to zero from the uh, 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 actually this is a mistake this uh, should be f f cos theta but let me make that mistake and see if uh, chat gpt will correct me uh, from the um, apply the force balancing uh, with the friction so i can solve this uh, system of two equations for uh, two unknowns, right? And you should correct me a little bit. Exactly on the right track. <laughs> so it's correcting me without telling me to correct me. So, you know, read through it and make sure that you recognize that, that 
I missed the applied force here, the, the horizontal component of applied force there. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's equal to friction, it's equal to that. Substitute friction, yeah, there, get applied the force. So for FF, um, so, uh, yeah, so, so let me just do that. So FF is equal to mu times mg minus FF sine theta divided by cos theta is equal to, uh, and let me plug in the numbers here. I'll do that. Uh, let me do that on my calculator. Because uh, I think I'm going to do this only once, so it's fine. Uh, so mu um, 0 0.21 times mg uh, 45 times 9.8 minus, oops, FF. Oh, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. That's, uh, so this, I solved it wrong. Um, um, this should, so I guess um, in the interest of time, I'm going to do some of the steps in my head. And having done some of the steps in my head, which is moving this over, factoring out of FF, so I get cosine theta plus mu k times sine theta uh, in parentheses divided out. Having done that, I get FF is equal to mu, mu times mg divided by uh, cos theta plus mu times uh, sine theta. So is equal to Okay, I have, um, so let me do it that way, 0 0.21 times m, oops, uh, 0 0.21 times m times 9.8 g um, divided by parenthesis cosine, oops, I got a, I should have done this in Wolfram Alpha, divided by cosine of theta, 25, I think I'm in degree mode. So trig cosine plus mu 0 0.21 times um, 25 trig sine parenthesis closed is equal to 93.07. 93 93.07, right? Good. So the work, it'll be that times 20. So can I do that in my head? I don't know. Um, 1860, that's probably enough. And minus 1860. If I. I thought that was right. Um, times 20. It's close enough. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, so, um, I was Oh, oh, I, I jumped the gun and calculated F times the work at the cost data. Um, so let me uh, do that times cosine of theta times 25 3 cosine 1687. Uh, so if you ever want to trap me, give me a situation where I think I can do the mental math and that'll ca cause me to kind of, you know, make mistakes. <laughs> So, all right, uh, so I'll say. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. So, so yeah, these are two examples using ChatGPT to work through um, Questions that can be challenging. And again, the main advantage of generative AI like ChatGPT would be that it, um, it you can interact with it. So places where you might be making mistakes, if you need to review deeper into the material, generative AI can help you with that. That's really uh, what I would recommend.
All right, so that's we are over time. Thank you so much for joining this virtual class session um, through via recording. I will see you in lab next week.